talk. <sighs> We're going German again. We've recently been to Germany. So it inspired me because there was a dish that I fancied. And she had it, the dish that is. So I said to her, I'll make it for you. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a classic German, or it might be French, we'll come to that. We're going to make a Flammerkusch. It is also known by other names, but we're going to call it a Flammerkusch. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is get my yeast going. Now we'll come to, again, uh, explaining about why we're using yeast. But what I've got here is two teaspoons of dried yeast, and I've got half a cup of warm water. Couldn't be bothered messing around putting cups to meals for just simply for that. And then I've got some just ordinary sugar. I've got half a, um, I just realized, I've mentioned that half a teaspoon and you want half a tablespoon. Okay, so I'll get some more sugar in there. Um, but we're now just going to mix that and just going to put that aside for at least 10 minutes to get it going. I can see this beer is going to get going as well. I'll move my beer because I'm sure I'm going to knock it over over now. Probably knock it over over here now. Anyway, our flamacouche is actually uh, sort of, well, it comes from the Alsace region which I know right now is in France. But at one time it was sort of Germany. And so in the region then, the Alsatian version is Flammerkusch. Germans might call it Flammerkusch or they might call it Flammerkuchen. But the French, after they sort of annexed the Alsace and said, we're having it, uh, they decided to call it a tart flambe, which is a bit deceiving because all them three words basically translate as um, pie baked in the flames, which is what it is, but tart flambe would suggest that it's flambeed, but it's not, it's cooked in a wood-fired oven traditionally. Well, I'm got wood-fired oven. That's where the yeast comes in. Anyway, we've got our yeast activating and we're now just going to sieve. I'm going to knock that bloody thing over. Uh, we're going to sieve our flowers. Now, I've got about three quarters of a cup of plain flour and I've got the same amount of rye flour. Traditionally, um, it would be a mixture, half and half, of rye and plain. So, we're just going to sift that into there. Um, you could, if you want to cut down on your bowls, but you know me, I'm extravagant. Uh, you could be making your yeast up in there and just sieve your flour directly into this. Um, but that's up to you. Um, the rye flour is quite coarse. Um, might need a little help going through. So, that's the flour. Now also, obviously in there, because we're going to make a dough, uh, we want some salt. And I've got half a teaspoon of uh, sea salt. Why is that salt always sticking, that bloody thing? So I'll put that through the sieve as well, because it's a very fine one. And then I've got about half a teaspoon there of olive oil, um, but I'll add that in later. So, there we go, our flour's are almost ready. We're still waiting on our yeast. Um, and for the more observant of you, you'll notice I'm not drinking out of a German beer glass. I thought I had one. I thought I had a German tankard, as it were. They're all Belgian. But that's close to Germany. The flour's in there. Now I'm just going to tip, I think I said olive oil, half a teaspoon, in that goes. And then 
this was bubbling up, I'd give it a stir, that's why it don't look like it necessarily. Um, we're just going to put that into there. And now, we're just going to mix that together. And we're then going to give it a good kneading for five minutes. Now, if you were making a larger quantity, because um, I reduced this recipe down because it was for making like four, let's say large, sort of. Um, the kind of serving you'd normally get, it would make four of. Um, but sometimes people would cut that up and they'd have like eight small ones. But anyway, uh, we didn't want eight. Because I thought the wife would probably say, I ain't eating all that. Anyway, um, I'm just going to knead this together. Um, I might have to add a little bit of water just to make it a little bit more pliable. Um, and I think you might have noticed I've moved my board because I'm going to turn it out and knead it on here for five minutes. Now, right at the beginning, I said to you about we're using yeast. And, well, traditionally it didn't. Traditionally, it wasn't leavened. Um, but like I said, it was baked in these really hot wood-fired ovens. Oh, that heat's making me thirsty. Yep. Can't get me I put beer in the other side. Oh, I had some nice German beers in Germany. Um, it was cooked in a, 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 a wood-fired a wood oven, which is actually where the baker was going to bake his bread. And one of the things he would do um, is when he thought it was hot enough, he would make these flammacouche, um, like I say, unleavened dough, shove that in amongst the, sort of move the embers, shove it in there, and if it was cooked within one to two minutes, with the outside just, just starting to catch, then he knew his oven was hot enough for his bread. Um, but if we do it without, I'm going to have to get some water in here, in a modern oven, which ain't going to get that hot, what tends to happen, we have to cook it for longer to get the same nice crisp base, because it's only a very thin base. Um, but it tends to dry it out. So by using yeast in it, it tends to not dry it out. So I'm just going to add a little bit more moisture to that and then knead that five minutes. And then we're going to put it to one side, somewhere warm, for an hour. And that's the main bit of the cooking. So then you've got an hour, just go and drink your beer. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about the toppings. Now there is a traditional toppings which we are using. There are some variations which we're not using. Now we haven't quite done the hour rise, if you were. Let's have a look at it. Well, it's in a little bit. Um, but the traditional topping on a flamacouche is sour cream or creme creme fraiche, creme fraiche. Called a Um I've made a bit of a cock up actually. I said to my wife, right, you can use olive oil, but traditionally it's sour cream. So she's bought sour cream because I told her to. Just she did, she was told this time. Um, however, I then realised, I buckled up, um, because traditionally it's cream for yeast. Um, but it doesn't matter because you can use olive oil, all right? So it's not a big deal. Um, so we roll out a very thin, what will be a crust obviously, uh, resembling like a pizza. Come on a minute. Um, but the toppings, is in this case, the traditional topping is cream fish, thinly sliced onion that's been lightly sort of sautéed as it were, and lardons. If you can't get lardons, as it happens, the wife managed to get some lardons. If you can't get lardons, then just some smoky bacon, 
preferably chunky, but if you can't, don't matter, and just chop that up. Some, sometimes they do it in like thin strips. Uh, when we had it, it was like more like lard ones. Um, so, I put my chopping board back here because I'm now just gonna thinly slice these onions. I've got my lard ons ready. Um, now, with the sour cream or creme fiche, traditionally you would add an egg yolk. What am I doing there? So I've got an egg yolk. Um, I've also got some pepper, some nutmeg, some salt, and in Germany, although this is optional, um, they often put some caraway seeds. So I've got some of them as well. So I'm just going to get rid of all them bits. Have another drink. I might have had a few while you, while you were waiting for the other bit. And then we'll get the onions sliced up. And I'll tell you just a little bit more. Not an awful lot more. I'll tell you about flamacouche. But I'll tell you a bit more. Just finished off chopping this onion. I've probably got a little bit more onion than I really need. But um, what we will be doing is um, cooking these till they're translucent. We don't want to caramelise them. We don't want to start going brown. Um, who cares? Now, I've used red onions. That's simply because Tesco's uh, didn't have any brown onions. They call, you know, like your normal looking onions. Um, I think you traditionally would use brown onions. So, I've got the oven on at 220. It's a fan oven. 220, and like I said to you, traditionally it would be a wood fired oven, it would be a lot hotter. Uh, we're not doing like we would do a bread. If we were cooking like a sourdough or something like that, we'd whack our oven up to the top. Actually, I haven't checked the temperature. That's 200. And... That's a bit wow, mate. Turn that down a little bit. Um, my oven temperature is shit, it's all over the place. So, we'll get it up nice and warm, and then all we're going to do is roll out our dough to a very thin base onto some baking paper, paper, baking paper, yeah, parchment paper, baking paper, and then put it onto a baking tray um, before we cover it. So like I said, it's a bit like a pizza. It looks like we're like doing a pizza. Now, it, traditionally, it could be rectangular, it could be oval. To be honest, it can be any thing you like. Um, I've got one baking tray prepared. It may be that I'll do another one. And then I need a frying pan. Okay, and some cooking oil or clarified butter. Because what we're going to do, the first off, is we're going to fry our lardons until they're slightly crispy. Let me move that out of the way. So you want about well, if you were doing clarified butter, about half a tablespoon of clarified butter. You don't need a lot because we're going to be, obviously, by cooking the lardons in particular, we are going to be getting some fat out. Now, I can't remember if I said, did I say about a yolk? Oh, I can't remember now. Um, when we make up our sour cream or creme fries, not always, but traditionally, we would add an egg yolk. So I've got an egg yolk there ready. So I told you this was originally just as a little tester. It was a dish that was made simply to test, is the oven not enough? If this thing went in for a couple of minutes and come out cooked, you know, the base was nice and thin and crispy, but a bit chewy, then the oven was right for bread. And that's all it was. Um, but then in about the 60s, um, which was when pizza sort of became like the big thing in restaurants. Um, suddenly, everyone, oh, I like these flamacouche or these tart flambe. And so they became something that you'd get in a restaurant. But before the 60s, the only person ever knew about were people who baked bread. So, I'm just going to get these cooking, and like I say, all we're going to do is I'm going to toss them around in there till they start going a little bit crispy. So, as is typical of British bloody meat, um, it's taken quite a long time 
uh, because the first thing that emerges from the uh, cooking meat is a load of bloody water. So we finally got rid of the water and now the lardons are starting to reduce, you know, the fat is starting to reduce down and they're starting to go a little bit crispy. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this in a previous thing. Um, I must admit, I always thought they injected water into like chicken, chickens. The amount of water that comes out of our chickens when we cook it. And I thought that was because they, you know, increase the wheat by pumping it in. They don't. It's because of the way they chip it. Um, supposedly to help preserve it, they chew it in like water, ice water. But because they won't chlorinate it in England, um, they just use chilled water and they soak it in it rather than like spray on it. By the time it's finished, it can have increased 20% in weight, which is simply the water. Now, I don't know if they do the same with pork, but I can tell you, every time I cook bacon or anything like that, the amount of water that comes out of it is like unbelievable. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to turn that heat down a little minute, and I'm just going to strain that, and I'm, you might notice I've lined that with some, uh, I'll just say baking paper, kitchen paper, just to catch a bit of the fat, but we want to make keep the much fat in there because we're going to fry the onions in there. So I'll put that back on the heat and what we're now going to do is we're not adding any extra oil we're just going to toss them on the floor uh, we're just going to toss these onions into the pan that had the cooking oil or clarified butter um, and then the rendered down as it were the bacon fat and we're now just going to fry these gently until they start going a bit translucent which would be interesting because they're red onion aren't they um anyway um again i've got a, a bowl there ready with some kitchen paper in it just to put it into sort of drain and then we'll be ready to roll out our dough put toppings on it well we've still got to knock together the you know the sour cream thing like I said traditionally it has an egg yolk down to put egg yolk in there don't worry um, equally uh, we put salt and pepper in it um, and also nutmeg you don't have to put nutmeg in there and at the end we sprinkle on some caraway seeds you don't have to put that in there tie it to you so I'm just going to clean my board up while these cook like I say, in the traditional, it's like one to two minutes, really just crisping the base. But we're going to be cooking this for about 20 minutes in the oven. So, I'm starting to run out of lard. What will I have to do instead? I'm sure I can find an alternative. Right, I think these onions are just about done, so I'm going to turn the heat off. And then, like I say, I'm just going to do the same as I did for the bacon. For now, I'm just going to let them drain, as it were, on some kitchen paper, just to sort of absorb most of the fat. Although, to be honest, there weren't a huge amount in here. And then, um, we're ready to start getting rolling out our dough and getting it ready to go in the oven. Remember, 220 pre heat So I've tipped my dough out and we're just going to give it a, a minute or two's need um, before we roll it out. Now, like I say, I've tried to make enough here for one sort of large. I'm basically going to try and sort of fit it onto the baking tray. You can split it into smaller ones if you want. Um, I said to you, you know, there's varieties. This, this is basically creme fraiche, or sour cream, um, onions, and lardons. 
However, there are some variations on it. For instance, there is a granite, or granite, or I don't know. Uh, that's made with Gruyere cheese on it as well. Uh, there's Forestier with mushrooms. And there's also Munster with Munster cheese. There is even dessert ones with things like apple and cinnamon. Oops, it's not, almost a bit of onion. Um, apple, uh, cinnamon, um, blueberries. There's some even actually do flambe it stuff like Calvados or some other sort of liqueur. So it can be from made, but traditionally it's not. So what I'm going to do is, because obviously I need to transfer it back on the pegging tray, I'm going to roll it out on here. So I'm just going to attempt to roll this. Now if you need to flour it, you can do. It wants to be thin. You know, it doesn't matter too much if it's not like a nice regular shape. Equally, if it's slightly bigger in the tray, because we can fold the sides up a little bit. So, I'm just going to get this rolling. Partly off camera, see if I fuck it up, you won't know. So you can see, I've now transferred that onto the baking tray. I'm just moving that over there. Now, I said to you, uh, we've got our... I've got a little pot here, about 150 mils, I think it is, of sour cream or cream fish. Got an egg yolk, and into that egg yolk, we're going to add about, I think it's half a teaspoon of pepper. Um, I'm using white pepper simply because the black pepper is a, bit, a little bit coarse. I've got some, um, it's about a quarter of a teaspoon to half a teaspoon of freshly ground nutmeg. I ground that earlier. And, and then about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, which again, never was come out. And all we're going to do now, even in that tiny little bowl there, is I'm just going to blend these together. Put that there, I'm just going to use that little whisk. Now, I've still got my caraway seeds, we've got our lardons, we've got our onions. But before we add any of them, what we want to do is just get this all mixed together and then we're going to spread a layer onto our dough. Like I say, nice and thin. Um, it resembles a pizza, it's not a pizza. Earlier, I did come across a recipe. I, said, I like to put tomato paste on the bottom. It's a fucking pizza if you put a tomato on it. Flamacouche does not have tomato. I think he delighted to do it. I had that and I had some cheese. You're making a fucking pizza! What I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Now obviously we've got way too much creme fiche mixture here but it's a bit difficult when you're, you know, you get down to one egg yolk. So there is a bit of wastage here. But like I say, you don't have to make it. I'm just making it just for me and the wife to share. I think when she had it, from Couchet's. Whoops, just chucked that over. Uh, when she had that in um, Germany, it wasn't quite as big as this. I had a bratwurst. Oh, no, sorry, I had a currywurst. I kept saying, oh, I've got to have a currywurst while I'm here. Oh, not a currywurst. Oh, I've got that. Too fattening. So she had a fun couche, I had a curry worst, and then I think it was our last full day, we're out, and I fancy trying a bratwurst. Oh no, it was day before last day, yeah. And she goes, I fancy trying a bratwurst. So I had a curry worst again from his like street stall, and she had a breakfast. Oh, I really like this. I'll have to have some more. When was at the airport? And we got the airport early-ish. So we went to get something to eat because it was going to be a long old day. Uh, she's coming home, this is. She goes, 
I really want a curry work. I'm gonna try a curry rest. Or a brat rest, but I like to try curry rest. Have she had a curry rest? Anyway, there's that. I'm just gonna clear this mess up and then we're gonna put a final top in. So I've started spreading the onions, which are a little bit on the wham side, I'll tell you. Um, over the base. You really want brown onions for this, okay? Um, certainly every Framacucci we saw in, up to Pass Italy then, in Germany, um, they were just like plain, what's their onions? Brown onions as you call them, okay? Um, so, you do want a generous portion of onions over it, and then we're gonna sprinkle over the lardons. Possibly could do with a little bit more in terms of lardons. Um, but it's a bit difficult to gauge um, supermarket packs of lardons. So, just gonna spread them on there. I think that's sort of more or less got it. Whoops, just moved all that there. And then finally, again, like I said, optional, um, just a light sprinkling of some caraway seeds, um, which is sort of typical in Germany. Although I have to say, I don't think our flammacook, or the wife's caracouche, um, had uh, caraway seeds on it. Oh, they're all out. Um, but there you go, I'm just gonna wash my hands. Then I'm gonna put that in the oven for about 20 minutes, but once the edges start browning, which I know I must admit I haven't got much in the way of edges, then take it out. If it's thin enough, it should be crispy, but we don't want it dried out. And remember, we've already cooked the bacon and the onions in. So here we go, out the oven. I did notice my oven temperature, which is all over the floor, have dropped significantly. So I turned it up and then, of course, obviously, just have to keep me eye on it. Like I said, when it starts looking a little bit sort of dark brown around the edges, you know you're done. So, let's get cutting it up. Now, traditionally, not that anybody here really does, but what you might do is cut a strip, roll it up, and eat it like that. Um, but we're basically gonna cut this in half and having half each. So I'm just gonna get this cut onto a plate and then we'll have a little tasting. Now, it looks a lot darker than it, as it was in Germany, but a part of that is because of the red onion, okay? Um, it did look, with brown onion, it shouldn't really be like that dark color. Don't really matter though, does it? So let's try it. So the base needs to be crisp, crispy, but a little bit chewy, we don't want it too dry. So the outer edges obviously are quite hard and dry, but where the creme fraiche has been, or sapling, still sort of moistish, a bit chewy. But what can I say? It is. Bacon, onion, you get that hint of sort of nutmeg and caraway. A little bit peppery. But there you go. There is your traditional German, stroke French, flammacouche.